words. They don't just communicate thoughts. They reveal the hidden things in our hearts. They don't just communicate ideas. They create worlds. The mouth and the words we say are a creative force that is not only used all the time, but everywhere we go. Our words are the very essence of how the Creator made us. Join us as we discover the essence of man and the power of speech. Hey, welcome to day 16 of the Essence of Man and the Power of Speech. And we're going to continue reading out of the Tumultic writings <clears throat> of um, the effects of our mouth. And yesterday we, we found out about how the, the, the tongue is, is um, <laughs> it's guarded by bone and flesh, your teeth and your lips. And it's the only organ that lays, or um, limb that lays... Uh, horizontal the rest of them lay vertically or stand ver upright and so it, we, we found out the, the how the wickedness of the tongue is and we're continuing on this thing because it's something we need to really work on and guard because of the fact that um, not only are we to guard our mouth and our mind and our heart but our mouth is surrounded, like I said, by the bone and flesh. So there, there's a lot there because the mouth is able to speak incredible things and, and redefine realities. And this is the way God made us. This is the power of our speech. This is the essence of who we are. So let's continue reading. Yesterday we read Proverbs 6, uh, the six things the Lord hates, yea, seven are an abomination. We left off there, and that's a lot of that's dealing with the mouth and how God does not want to hang out with people who speak evil because... When we speak evil, it's a form of pride. Okay? So watch this. With regard, and, and again, I'm reading uh, out of the, uh, the Tumultic writing, and it's uh, Eric and 15b, or Erahim, I guess you could say. My Hebrew is not very good. Uh, Rav Hista further, Hista further uh, says, that with regard to anyone who speaks malicious speech, the Holy One, blessed be he, he says about him uh, to Gehenna, I will be on him from above and you will be on him from below and together we will judge him and punish him as it is stated. So think about that. Uh, judgment's not only coming from above, but it's coming from below in Gehenna, the place of hell, because of evil speech. Because of this, because sharp arrows of the mighty with the coals uh, thereof, malicious speech must be equivalent to all three. Or excuse me, I read that wrong. Uh, let me read it one more time because I got, got it backwards here. Uh, sharp arrows of the mighty with coals that broom. Psalms 124. The word arrows means nothing other than the tongue, as it is stated, that their tongue is a sharpened arrow. It speaks deceit. One who speaks peaceably to his neighbor with his mouth, but his heart, he lies and wait for him. Jeremiah 9, 7. So the mouth is referred to uh, uh, like an arrow. Your tongue is referred to like an arrow. Your words are referred to like an arrow. Um, and, and the equivalent of that is, you know, back in the day when they would fight, they'd raise the arrow way up, point the arrow way up, release it, and it would go. They would get the best trajectory that way, and it would fall down and pierce. And that's pretty much what your words do. They go up into the heavens, and then they come down, and they pierce. They're sharp. Uh, notice what this says, too. Uh, what is the remedy for those who speak malicious speech? If he is a Torah scholar, let him study Torah. As it is stated, a soothing tongue is a, a tree of life, but its perverseness is a broken spirit, Proverbs 15, 4. And the word tongue means nothing other than malicious speech. As it is stated, their tongue is a sharpened arrow. It speaks deceit, Jeremiah 9, 7. Uh, 
And the word tree means nothing other than the Torah. As it is stated, it is a tree of life to them that lay hold of it. Proverbs 3.18 And if he is an ignoramus, <laughs> let him humble his mind. As it is stated, its perverseness is a broken spirit. Proverbs 15.4 in other words, one who perverts his mouth or his tongue with malicious speech should remedy his behavior by cultivating a broken and humble spirit. Now, this follows along the line, and we're going to get into James. This follows along the line of what James says. He talks about God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. But yet there's so much in chapter three where it talks about your mouth. So here again, we're seeing a connection with evil speech connected to pride. Again, we're seeing a connection here that evil speech is connected to arrogancy and pride. We don't associate evil speech with pride at all. But we're, we're, we're starting to see this connection here. Let's read on. If one has already spoken malicious speech, he has no remedy. As King David, inspired by divine spirit, also already cut him off with the punishment of, of uh, Karet, as it is stated, may the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that speaks great things, Psalms 12.4. Rather, what is remedy beforehand so that he does not come to speak malicious speech? If he is a Torah scholar, let him study Torah. And if he is an ignoramus, let him humble him his mind. As it is stated, a soothing tongue is a tree of life. But and we go right back then. But his perverseness is a broken spirit. Who is humble will not come to speak badly about another. One who is humble will not speak badly about another. So here's another instance. And the whole concept, if he, if he want, if, in order to be humble, let him read the scriptures. Let him, let him go to the scriptures and humble himself and obey these scriptures. For us, we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God. Understand that Christ is our Savior and Lord. We humble ourselves and we still need to read the scriptures and study. The Bible doesn't say read to study. Your, doesn't, the, the Bible doesn't say read the scriptures to prove yourself under righteousness. It says study to show yourself approved under righteousness so that we would become humble. And if you notice, the more you truly study, the more humble you become. Now, if you've been on this journey and you're truly studying, I imagine I would think there's some humility coming that you didn't know you had. Versus if you're just reading your little devotionals and you're doing your little thing, there, there's still room for pride. But one who truly studies... He's applying his mind and his heart, and he's, he's throwing himself into it. And in the process, he's finding things about himself he does not like, and so therefore he changes. This is the humbling factor. Now, what this, does this do? It causes you now to be more conscious of the words that you speak, because you're in the essence and likeness of God. So what we're seeing here <laughs> is evil speech is associated with pride. And there's more. So let's look at it. Um, here we go. The school of Rabbi uh, Ishmael taught anyone who speaks malicious speech increases his sins to the degree that he that they correspond to the three cardinal transgressions. So the three, the evil, evil speech is equivalent to or correspond with or act unto the three uh, cardinal transgressions, which is idol worship. Where there's idol worship, there's no worship for God. And forbidden sexual relationships. Do you not know your body is the temple of the living God? So on and so forth. Which, by the way, fornication, if you look at that word fornication in the Greek, it's also the root word of idol worship. So it takes you right back to idol worship. And bloodshed, which is the murdering of people. This can be derived from a verbal analogy based on the word great. It is written here, May the Lord cut off all flattering lips, the tongue that speaks great things, which is great lies. Psalms 12.4 And as it is written with regard to idol worship, Moses returned to the Lord and said, All oh, this people have sinned a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. So notice uh, speaking great things, which is great evil, is compared to a great sin of idol worship. That's the word great. 
And with regard to forbidden sexual relations, it is written that when uh, Potiphar's wife attempted to seduce Joseph, as he responded, how can I do this great wickedness and sin against God? So when, when Potiphar's wife was trying to trick Joseph into sleeping with him, he said, how can I do this great sin and sin against God? Genesis 39, 9. So again, great words of evil or great, great, uh, great uh, words spoken of evil is equivalent to great uh, sin with idol worship, building the calf, and now equivalent to the great sin of sexual immorality with Joseph and, and Potiphar's wife. Okay, With regard to bloodshed, it is written, After Cain murdered his brother, and Cain said to the Lord, My punishment is greater than I can bear. Genesis 4.13 So we see here three great sins. The great sin of the calf, being made when Moses came down from the mountain, the great sin of sexual immorality with uh, that uh, Potiphar's wife wanted to happen with Joseph. And Joseph said, how can I do this great sin against God? And then we see the third great sin where, where, where Cain says, how, how can I bear this, this great sin that I have done? The punishment is too great for me. These three great sins are compared to a great uh, uh, one who speaks great things in Psalms 12, 4, talking about evil speech. So this is why, from a Jewish perspective, evil speech, the greatness of evil speech and its atrocities are equivalent to idol worship, sexual immorality, and murder. Because those three things were called great sins, and this is called great speech which is compared to evil speech. So, and, and this is the thing though, the sin of evil speech is not singular, it's plural. Meaning that many things happen with one word, spoken in evil. The, uh, uh, the Gemara asks, granted that regard to malicious speech, the verse uses the plural, great things. But the plural indicates a minimum of two. So when you speak evil, it's not just one thing, it's two things. And the problem is because it's affecting the person who's speaking it, minimum, minimum two, and the person who's listening to it. So when a person is speaking gossip, for instance, the person who's speaking gossip is doing the sin, and the person who's listening to the gossip is doing the sin. Thus, great things, too. Great thing was the children of Israel built the calf. Great thing, great sin, great sin, they, they built the calf, great sin, Potiphar tried to seduce Joseph. Great punishment, Cain's sin, killing his brother. But notice great things when it comes to your mouth because more people are involved. Because it, how it's interpreted, how it's affected, see, how it happens. The person who's listening, then they go tell. The person who's speaking and the person you're talking about, it's actually three. The person you're speaking about, the person who's listening, and the person who's speaking. Damage is done. Things. Plural. The dangers of our mouth. <laughs> Who knew? But now we know. Don't let your words create great things of evil. Let them create great things of blessedness and righteousness and holiness unto God. The second, or the second thing, don't, 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 don't uh, uh, stay humble. If we stay humble, we're, we're less likely to speak evil. Okay? Amen. Good stuff. Hard stuff, but good. Tough stuff, but good stuff. <laughs> Wait till tomorrow. Even more great things, but good things, the blessed things. Tune in tomorrow. Have a great day.